Hey guys, welcome back on the channel and today I want to teach you how to play against e4, b6 with white pieces, so-called Owen's defense. I already had a lecture on chess bra about this one and it is not going to be too different uh, in comparison to that file, uh, although here I'm going to give you like many more improvements and just like uh, the freshest updates. So let's get started. Thank you all for your donations, for support. Uh, we appreciate that so much and I hope you're gonna like content in the future as well. So we of course play uh, d4 afterwards and after bishop e7 we play bishop to d3. It's way more uh, accurate uh, than knight c3 first. So uh, if you ask me how should you play against this one, I'd always go with the bishop d3. And here we have to uh, make the difference between three continuations by black. They can play absolutely unsound and incorrect gambit uh, that I played recently on a championship of my club uh, blitz tournament that I won. If you remember, I published that out 17 and a half out of 20. And I beat an IM uh, and it goes with f5, I believe. This unsouth gambit has its name probably by the guy who opted for this f5 uh, uh, first, and it's very bad. So you take, they take on g2, and the only probably reasonable thing to go with this variation is to go in hyper or bullet, uh, speaking from black's point of view. You just go queen h5 check, g6, and you take. So let's take a look at this one. They can't take on h1. If they take on h1, you either take on h7, which is checkmate to the king by queen on h5, or you can even push your pawn up to g7, which is also checkmate. And interesting, uh, when is it, if they play knight f6, it happened to me once, I captured on h7, so when they took my queen, bishop was the one who mated the king on e8. Uh, although they have to play bishop g7. And uh, for a long time, I had troubles with this position uh, because I tried to improvise here. Position looks winning, but this operation is simply lost for black. And if, some, if something is lost, you don't have to improvise that. I mean, all variations in chess, I spoke about that too many times, we can just divide into two groups. And sound ones, and those you simply learn the refutations and learn how to beat them or how to get like much better positions and good ones just like Ray Lopez Sicilians or other openings where you just learn the basic concepts plans and you just play like a game of chess. After a bishop g7 of course that you should take on h7 and king f8 and uh, here is the line. Uh, for a long time uh, almost everybody used to take this knight on g8, but eventually you're gonna lose the rook on h1. And that's the risk uh, you have to be uh, ready to face in your game. You're down an exchange, he's got a weak king, you have certain amount of compensation, but it's still a little bit unclear. Uh, although in chess encyclopedia many years ago, I found queen f5, knight f6 and bishop h6. That variation is also nothing. I mean, it's better for white, but it's not winning uh, as winning as the line knight to f3. You have to remember this move. It's concrete engine strongest move. Just like I told you, like 15 days ago, I played the championship of my club. I won that championship. Uh, and uh, in semifinals, I played against an IM rated around 2400 FIDE and uh, the result was 1-1. One, one. Uh, we played the best out of four and I had to win this game especially because I had white and I was shocked when he played third move f5. When he came up with third move f5 I said wow uh, it's good because day before that I was explaining this variation to a student of mine uh, and I just explained him you should take on g6 and after bishop g7, you should take on h7, but don't grab the knight on g8. Anyways, uh, after 
uh, Queen King F8, I played Knight F3 immediately. My opponent spent a couple of seconds and this, probably he was thinking, should he take on H1 or F3 or just on to play Knight F6? Uh, in case they go with Bishop H1, you just go Knight E5. You threaten this mate. And when they take, you play D takes E5. You're now down a rook, but at the moment you want to, actually this knight is trapped, so it's uh, probably uh, really important to see uh, when are we going to take it, but of course they can't avoid it. Um, and also with this D takes E5, you don't, don't even allow them to play knight F6 because it's bishop H6 checkmate, but even if they want to do that, they, they wouldn't be able because of the pawn on e5. So just because of this, bishop h1 doesn't work, but you have to remember knight e5 move. One guy asked me, what if queen e8? Uh, then you uh, promote. And uh, the thing is, if they play like uh, king g8, you take the queen for free. In case they go with, uh, with uh, rook g8, then you, for example, can play bishop g6. They have to go with a move like queen c8, but a better move is knight g6. Better move is knight g6, and you just win on the spot because they don't have a proper way, because they have to play king f7, and then you find a discovery, and you find a, a meeting pattern, and white is just completely winning. Uh, just because of this, after knight f3, they shouldn't take on... Um, just like I showed you in h1. You just play knight e5. Um, in case of uh, knight f6, that actually happened in my game, I'll show you what to do. In case of bishop f3, you just take on f3, it's check, it's fork on the rook on a8, it's check to the king, and don't even forget before that uh, you can grab the knight, unless they play knight f6, but if they play that, you just take on a8 and you're completely winning because you're up in exchange. That practically means that they have to play uh, knight f6. And that's what my opponent did. I played queen g6. I threatened his bishop on g2. In case he takes on h1, I would play bishop h6, uh, forcing them to take on h6. In case they take by rook, I play knight g5. So look what I'm doing. I'm threatening mate in one. So if they play queen e8, I just take on h7 take on h7 and queen g7. I believe now when I show you all these forcing mating patterns, if rook takes, you just give mate. If bishop takes, you just give check. They go like this, you take the bishop. They go king f7, you take like this. They go king e6, you go queen g6. They go like this, knight c3. And you play queen g5 and they practically can't stop uh, checkmate with the queen e3. So, once again, I have to point this out and I have to warn you. There are always good and bad lines. Those bad lines in this era of computers, you just have to uh, take it for granted, but just learn those variations and the refutations. This is a clear refutation of the Owens defense, but off this line. Uh, let's carry on. My opponent after queen g6 played bishop f3. I expected this because this is a little bit better. And in case... Uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, if bishop h1, bishop h6, I showed you, what if rook h7? But if they take by uh, bishop, you take, they go like this, knight g5, king e8, and bishop g6, it's checkmate. And why would you waste your time uh, and improvise something if you can just learn these variations and mate your opponent without any problems? So when they played bishop f3, I played uh, rook g1. Um, I threatened to take the bishop. My opponent instantly captured by rook, and I instantly played queen g3 because I knew the refutation. What was I threatening? I was threatening to take the rook on h7, followed by queen g7. I threatened the bishop on e4, on f3. He instantly played bishop e4. I captured, played queen f3, giving check and threatening king in the knight. And when he played, um, if he plays king e8, we take the knight. He played knight f6, I captured the queen on a8 and won the game in, in the next couple of moves. Uh, so just like you see, sometimes even in important moments, 
even in important games, just like in my tournament, can you imagine in semifinals, you play the third almost decisive game and your opponent goes, he pro he not probably, he actually went to surprise me with this old forgotten but extremely bad gambit. Uh, I showed you everything about F5 and this is all you have to remember about this unsound gambit. In case of G6, this is the double fianchero Nakamura used to play this for a long time online in his games. You just go with F4, uh, so uh, you have a stretched pawn structure from D4 to F4, it's nice. You just want to play knight F3, one bishop G7, you play knight F3, E6 to play knight E7, castles, and whether they play D6, whether they play knight E7, your reaction should be the same. You just go with f5, breaking on the king's side. Uh, you just open this bishop on uh, c1, prepare yourself for queen e1, queen h4, typical grand prix attack, and you just launch a strong initiative on the king's side. Uh, just because of this, all these guys who play Owen's defense after bishop d3 should play e6. That's the best line, and that's what most of them do. You play knight to c3, they go knight f6. Once again, I would just briefly like to remind you of the fact that g6 now, you also play f4, bishop g7, knight f3, and after castles, uh, you just go, whether they go castle or d6, of course, with the most typical way of f5. And this definitely gives quite a promising attacking position. So they can play once against this g6. If they now play f5, it's a little bit different, uh, but it's still risky and bad. You take, they take, you play queen h5, g6, you take, you take on h7, so everything the same. And what's the difference? Here, uh, they already have e6 being played, which is bad for them because we play bishop g5. Why is that so important? When they play knight f6, queen h4, they take the rook. So once again, I'm warning you, uh, you can't improvise here because you don't even have a good compensation if you don't know what to do. You only have pawn for the given rook. It's crazy. And knight g on e2, uh, this knight has to go here. Knight f4, knight g6, knight h8, and this guy played king e2 with a winning position. Uh, this position, position was reached in a game some correspondence game many, many years ago, I believe almost 50 years ago, and uh, definitely uh, White is winning, but uh, at that time, White didn't know the refutation. Nowadays, you have me, and you're gonna have all these refutations from now on. So you have to play knight c3, and they have to play knight f6. Uh, if they play c5, you'll play d5, but it is going to transpose into the lines that I anyways intend to teach you. If they play bishop before, you'll play knight g2. Please, I insist on this knight g2. Everybody plays knight f6. That's what I played against Nakamura, against Grandmaster, Aman Hamilton. That's what I played against a huge amount of really good titled players, including some good GMs, IMs, and other titled players. Here we come with the refutation and along with this knight g on e2 uh, refutation, it's the knight g on e2. This is the most annoying move for black. Ever since I started uh, to play this variation and uh, I found a couple of uh, games with it and the main ideas by white with knight g on e2, I made like 89% against this variation. If in blitz you have 89%, what does it mean? Probably in tournament games over the board chess, I would have 100% because in blitz you might blunder queen or rook sometimes because you're tired or you're, I don't know, just blind that game. But basically, uh, this is what you have to remember. Um, from practical point of view, there were two books published out about the Owens defense lately. Uh, by Christian Bauer, a, f a famous French GM who uh, used to play b6, uh, he didn't even mention knight g on e2. Uh, I am for Shmakov or Ilya Odesky who plays with white pieces b3, 
uh, Larson's defense uh, and with black pieces against the fur b6 also published out a book about the Owens defense once again he didn't mention the knight g on e2 so uh, I just have to say that the knight g on e2 presents currently the refutation of the Owens defense and let me just give you three uh, most popular lines practically the only ones that you have to be familiar with they can play c5, d5, and bishop e4. Those who play bishop e7, that's a passive move with a bad bishop and e7. You play e5 in order to open up both of your bishops. When they play knight e5, you capture, capture, play castle, castle, kick this bishop away in order to open this queen. And how do you open the queen? Queen goes onto g4, threatens bishop h6, uh, watch out, they're about to lose an exchange. They gotta put the king into safety, but now we play rook e1. I want to use the rook lifting and I want to kill them on the king side. Easy refutation of the bishop e7. We don't have to bother ourselves with more than this. Three years ago, I played on chess.com a game against Nakamura. Uh, you certainly know who Nakamura is. He is the, after Carlsen, the best blitz bullet and hyper bullet player in the world um, and uh, he likes to play these uh, b6 uh, in blitz games uh, this was a three minute game i played a3 he captured and played d5 here white really enjoys easy uh, development and a pretty good advantage with the bishop pair and an open possibilities uh, to take advantage of with this queen. Uh, Nakamura played d5. Guys like to play against uh, me d6, but let me show you my game against Nakamura. I played e5, knight e4, and if I had played queen g4, uh, I'm immediately completely winning because I, I'm threatening to take knight on e4 and pawn on g7. I didn't play that. I played bishop e4, d takes and played queen g4. I still was uh, uh, absolutely fine and much better in this game because in case he goes like this, bishop g5, they can't take on d4 because you play rook to d1 and rook d8 checkmate. And after queen d7, you've got a huge initiative. Uh, what am I actually uh, trying to say and what, I'm, what am I referring to? Uh, well, if... I managed to outplay out of the opening one of the best players in the world, especially in Blitz, uh, all together with Carlsen, he's certainly uh, the best player in the world, uh, then this is really, really a uh, good refutation and a nice line for you. Unfortunately, I lost the game just because he's a better player, but doesn't mean anything. I mean, I, I just blunder something very badly, but uh, what I'm actually trying to say, I got a winning position. Uh, against him with with the same analysis I'm sharing now with you. Uh, if d6 happens, you just go e5, kicking the knight away in order to get the open g4 square for your queen. d takes, d takes. If knight f to d7, queen g4. If knight d5, you play queen g4. Once again, uh, g6, consider if it's better to play bishop g5 or bishop h6. In case of uh, King f8, you just play bishop g5 followed by rook d1, short castle, f4, f5, and you've got enormous initiative. So bishop b4 uh, became very popular lately by guys uh, who had lots of problems against this line. Uh, and knight g2 refutation. So after you play knight g2, they practically have two most common and most solid moves. Uh, c5 and d5. In practice, d5 works a little bit better for, for black, uh, but it doesn't mean it's anything that's special. Uh, c5, we just crush them so bad. In case of d5, we play e5, and they have to play knight to e4. Uh, if they play knight to e4, remember that the best uh, move is retreating this knight to b1 and threatening to uh, trap the knight in two moves, f3, because they don't have queen h4 because of g3. That's another point behind this uh, strong knight on uh, e2. And after knight b1, you threaten f3. In when they play knight g5, you have h4 to trap this knight. 
they have to play something like f6, you play f3, knight g5, you can even take play castles and play f4 and launch a strong attack on the king's side. The thing is that they have to play knight f to d7 rather than knight e4. Once again, knight e4, a little bit bizarre refutation of this line is knight goes back to b1, threatening this f3. And by the way, uh, engines will tell you that h6 is also possible, f3, knight g5, you just go castles, but you could have gone with h4 and c3, solidifying the pawn chain and the pawn structure and uh, fighting against the knight on h7. So after like uh, knight to d7, you play knight f4. It's very important to understand the concept of knight f4. You threaten knight takes e6. So many games I won when my opponent, uh, my opponents went with the most typical c5. They simply don't understand what the point could be behind this knight on f4. You immediately take. For example, I won. I'm not lying to you if I say that I won more than 20 games. Uh, f takes e6, queen h5, g6. Funny thing is that when they play g6, uh, they hope that I should take the rook, but I take here and win the queen. Those who are a little bit better, they play king e7, hoping that after bishop g5 they would have knight f6, but then we take, we take on f6, that's a nice tactics, and we play queen h4, a famous way of uh, capturing the queen and, uh, you know, like separating the king from the queen. Uh, just because of this, you understand that at the moment you threaten knight takes e6. That practically means that they have to go with a move like uh, bishop e7 or a g6. If they go with bishop e7, that's how I beat uh, somebody, I believe that's an IM from Canada. I played queen g4. They can't play castles because you play queen h5. And in case they go like this, you sack everything, bring your bishop to h6, and you should be winning. Analyze this at home. If after queen g4, that's what I did, he played g6, he didn't expect I would uh, once again do the sack, knight e6. So after f takes e6, I captured on g6, captured on g6, played bishop h6. The whole line is forced, so that's why I'm showing you a little bit faster. They have to take, otherwise it, it was made. And here you have to give this check. When the guy played king f8, simple refutation is knight e2. This knight goes towards f4 and then either want to capture, uh, it wants to uh, capture on e6 or uh, come up with knight g6 with almost mating threats. In that game he played bishop g5 and resigned after h4 and another fm played against me queen e8 which makes sense but after knight f4 queen f7 he thought that after queen g8 he was defending himself. I had knight e6, now captured, two on c7, and we had a bit comic game where I had two rooks and eight pawns against three pawns and four minor pieces. You don't have to be Magnus Carlsen or Gary Kasper to know how to play this position with white. I just made castle and start pushing these pawns on the king's side like crazy. Of course, that I won the game. Uh, and uh, here, when uh, we finally uh, have to uh, take a look at knight f to d7, knight f4, and when they really play a uh, correct move, uh, when they play g6, it just transposes into the line I show you, queen g4. In case they go bishop e7, we just transpose uh, into the same line. In case they go with queen e7, uh, you play knight b5, and when they go knight a6, you go b3. This is another game of mine, played against Grandmaster Amon Hamilton, famous chess bra guy. We played an ICC back to December 2012, and here I got winning because I was threatening bishop a3, then I have sacrifices on e6 and g6, Amon played castle, uh, this definitely loses a pawn, but it's hard to suggest anything else. I took on a7, brought my knight back here, he played uh, night before I played castles and he played some queen e8. I played a4, uh, bishop a3, captured by knight, uh, took by rook, doubled these rooks, 
played c4 and broke on the king's side with c5 and b4. After he played f5, queen f4, I just jumped with this knight on d6, uh, absolutely breaking the pawn structure on the king and threatening b5. And I showed you all these possibilities and all these uh, moves. So after net f4, they can also play queen e7. Queen e7 just controls e6 square, prevents knight e6, but it gives us knight b5. After knight a6, we just go with b3 with absolutely the same ideas like from my game against Hamilton. You've seen everything and uh, you can realize uh, why should we uh, call this variation with d5 very dangerous uh, for them. So after knight g2, I believe that c5 uh, could be a little bit maybe better alternative but in, which is also very interesting in practice, uh, c5 scores even worse for black. You just go with this pawn side. Uh, this is absolutely the most aggressive and the most ambitious approach by white. Uh, and uh, it's very important to say that those who don't want to take it, you just go castle, uh, you just go with knight g3, or you can even go with... <clears throat> with uh, a4 <clears throat> to stop b5 and afterwards to go uh, with some some other typical ideas such as castle and ig3 uh, when they take on d5 you take and they simply have to take once again d6 wouldn't lead anywhere because you play knight g3 in order to place this knight on f5 your queen comes on f3 rook goes on e1 and you're just so much better after knight e5 I, you take on d5 and play castles. And here, I just have to show you two more lines and we're done. And that's what makes this refutation, knight g and e2, and this whole line and the concept by white so special, because it's so easy. So, uh, people like to play bishop e7. And I just checked my databases on lead chess and chess.com. I played six blitz games and six times uh, six times I won the following way. I play knight f4. Uh, if they play bishop e6, you take. When they play f takes e6, you give check. They go king f8, you have queen f3, winning the rook on a8, or, uh, and it's with tempi. In case of g6, you take on g6 and win the rook. So they have to go with d takes e6, where you play queen g4. And now they, they can play g6 because of check, check, uh, queen e4, and they lose once again either knight or rook on a8, because if knight d7, bishop d7. And in case of castles, you just go queen e4, a famous double threat for all of you, known from some French type of games. Uh, six games I won the following way. They all put a bishop back on b7. Looks like, well, it's nice, we grab the pawn, let's put a bishop back, but it doesn't work. You play rook e1. And then they all say, probably, oh, let me just uh, breathe easily now because I finally made castle. Well, that's exactly the problem, because we play queen h5. Here you get a take by knight, not by bishop, because whether they take by f or h pawn, you just take like this. They can't play rook f7. They have to take, and after this, you play rook e5. Six games, six games, I won in the same fashion, using the same trick. That's why after you, they play bishop d5 and you play castles, they shouldn't go with bishop e7, but they should bring this bishop back to e6. You play knight f4, and when they play knight c6, which is practically the only move, otherwise it would transpose into the line I already showed you, you just take on e6, and once again they can play f takes because of queen h5, and you just win the queen. Uh, they have to play d takes e6, and here the refutation comes now. Uh, in a pos I played this game three times, uh, of course, that I won all those three games, uh, and you just play bishop f4. Practically, this move is aimed against bishop d6 by black, against queen c7, and you just want to go with bishop b5. Even, even uh, if you didn't have these possibilities, your position would be winning, uh, not to mention that they simply are uh, moveless here. So, uh, in one of my games was... Uh, of course, bishop d6 doesn't work because of bishop b5 and two pieces are hanging. 
in uh, case of bishop e7, let me show you a game of mine. I played bishop e5, played uh, queen d8. They have to take by uh, king. Uh, if they take by bishop, boom, uh, you you lost your rook. A uh, rook a8, bishop e7, and the rook is just lost. And uh, when they uh, when my opponent went with the king d8, I came up with this check, played it here, took on d8, bishop e5 put my rook on d1 and managed to win this game. This position I had twice in my uh, practice. I won both of these games. We're down a pawn, but we have a bishop pair, open d-file, and the possibility to come down with a rook on the seventh rank and penetrate there and to win the game. Finally, after a bishop f4, it looks like uh, most of players do rook c8 because it prevents bishop b 5 and those threats, but you play bishop a6. Queen d1, rook d1. Bishop cannot go to either b8 or a8. Has to go to d8. You now bring it back, which uh, saves the tempi for you. And this is the third game that I played in this system. After like rook d2, where I wanted to double up my rooks. Play rook a to d1. Brought this bishop back to e3. Penetrated with this rook onto the seventh rank playing like this. And decided to limit the knight on c6 with c3. With the bishop here, with a great control of the d-file, seven rank, uh, and a very passive game for black without a single counter chance, uh, I, I managed to win that game very easily, and the uh, game is practically already decided. Hope that you enjoyed this presentation. I just tried it to make it, uh, you know, like short for you. Uh, not to show you like to overloaded kinds of stuff and uh, to go deep into this analysis this is absolutely fine just like you see even if you play against Nakamura you'll be able to get a winning position but would you be able to win the game afterwards I guess not but at least you, you can brag around that you were winning uh, have a good one and thank you for watching bye bye